strongly advise you not to touch this artifact. With its current state, it will basically kill you. I will step closer and w carefully, without touching it, inspect the uh, hilt to see if I can just look at gather it. any information about the sword. Oh. Well, it's like from the look of it, it's not. It's a sword, one of its kind. You never see any sword like this. Uh, before and on the hill, there's also a place for something that you might f you think that it might be a gem or some sorts That's now it's empty. So there's a place to put a gem like socket oh, There's a socket so you can put a gem in here or some kind of ruby or some kind of stone basically And if you wanna you can well detect magic <laughs> Yep detect magic Oh, I'm gonna enjoy this. Okay, so you're blinded. <laughs> no, no. I already no. am, technically. Basically, uh, it's not exactly as the rule states, but it's basically rule of cool right now. When you try to detect magical force or m simple magic from this device, you f in a second you feel like a like a whole planet like dropped on on top of you the uh, f the amount of power holding inside of this uh, thing even though it's broken you know it's broken it's only a part of the artifact it's so great that you have a uh, slight trouble in standing on your on your like not to fall down to your knees but this thing like lasts only for a second then like you feel while you like getting the uh, vibrations or something like that. Like the uh, sorry, forgot the word. Basically, while you are f further inspecting the artifact, the mental image you get that basically this thing is like a infinite, infinite empty bowl that simply waits to be. Like uh, filled, filled, yeah, and basically it will uh, like take everything. And overall, your last thought, uh, you are pretty sure that with the, if you feel the amount of power from only a part of artifact, if this thing gets completed, like someone assembles all the parts. Uh, the balance will be thrown off. There will be nothing like balance. Like everything will be. This thing in the wrong hands or even in the right hands can do a lot of bad and like completely fuck up the order of things. Hmm. Hmm. That seems bad. Basically, it's the thing, just like Genkiro said, you do not want to fuck with this. Hmm. And you also get a strange, like, strong feeling that you don't want to touch this thing with your bare hands. Go ahead, touch it. You know you want to. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. I'm just saying you will die. Simple as that. Genkiro whispers behind your ear. <laughs> take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Okay, so from me, I think that's everything you get, like from this blade, what's your reaction? Are you saying anything? I'm gonna try something possibly stupid. Just give me a minute to check it out. Goodbye, Elm Elmrodo Yara. And this is the... This is the cue that the Genkiro leaves the room. When somebody says they're going to try something stupid. <laughs> okay. Well, no. Go ahead. I can't. I can't say no if somebody wants to try something. It's role playing. You like. There goes the campaign. He's I'm gonna going to destroy the magic world. On the thing. Uh, Just to see what happens. Can you what? repeat? I'm going to cast a spell magic on the thing. Could you write? Just it? to see what happens. Okay. Sure. Don't roll anything. Basically, what happens? Can you like like you are ex like. You are pointing your hand and you're like, like trying to, you're unleashing this spell. 
and mm. not a second later the backfire is so powerful that basically you feel the even though it's only a dispel magic spell the force that hits you is so hard that basically you oh. fly through the room and hit the wall mm -hmm. i mean not backfire backslash or something like that backlash backlash yeah no damage but you basically mm. Knock till next week. Yeah, you're. It's way above your leak in terms of. I get of up, rub the back of my head, and it's like, oh yeah, that's definitely gonna end up being a problem. Uh, yes, and the uh, head cleric looks at you. Uh, well, yes, if you. Like, already know everything, I would like to go and speak with your other teammates. Because I'm guessing we have a lot to talk about. The, is there any response, Elm? Do you not? Do you say uh, yes? Or one more time, and it hear quite well. Okay, sorry. So yeah, so say if you don't hear me quite well. So okay. Oh. So she looks at you and says that if that's everything. Uh, I think, yeah, we have, this city has a few problems and I'd like to speak with you and your teammates to decide what you wanna and we wanna do, if we wanna do something, if you wanna do something. That is all for now. Okay, so I'm assuming uh, you are following her outside, like outside from this room and you still in Basilica and you meet the party is all together and yeah head head clerics begins by saying that so from the what i understand and what has transpired over the last few days we have three major problems that not only can affect this city but the whole region first we have this artifact beneath our feet second there is a potential basically war going on although with I didn't... a dragon sorry with a dragon yes uh, there is a matter of this dragon and we don't know if if they gonna attack again because until now uh, after the initial attack I we didn't hear anything about further movements of the enemy uh, and the third problem is that um, undead thingy and the lich if i heard correctly and she looks at elm yes the um lich lives in a flying castle in the desolated lands That's ridiculous. Castles can't fly. They're castles. I mean, yeah, you can call it castle, but as you, you know, can I, safely I call it... assume that it's most likely another artifact. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. How else would he get a castle to fly? <laughs> Anyways, at the very least, that's where his phylactery is. Hmm. And in at most two weeks, he will be back. So, the yes. question is, I suppose, how are we even going to get up in that castle, even if we are going to go there? How high was the castle again? Mm, yeah, from maximum 200 feet above the air. Above the level of the ground. Can you say that in meters? Uh, okay, so in meters that will be... Okay, wait. So, if I'm saying in meters, so in meters it will be at least uh, 200. Okay, okay. Hmm. What? Well, help with that. Okay, so... Cleric looks at all of you and says, 
so I think the another question is where do we begin like city has too much like uh, problems to deal at the one moment most of the guards and the soldiers went to the front lines to reinforce the Fort Darkwell and the other forts. So the defenses of Pinewood are slightly lower. The other thing is, when this leech comes back and if, if he manages to take over the city, it it would be really bad if he gets his hands on this artifact. Is it possible that he would know about it? I'm not really sure. I'm not sure if he if he could even like use it, but if the city is lost and he takes control over this area, it would be much harder for us uh, to retake it and take care of it. The first problem we should handle is actually the artifact. In case the city gets taken over by the lich or the dragon, we should make sure that no one can find it. Not really sure how a dragon could take over a city. Maybe designated the. Uh, He's got an army of orcs. He do go have an army of orcs and hill giants. Take the city, sack the city. Steal the city, or, you know. Essentially, kill all the humans here. How about that? Fine. But uh, does a dragon know about the artifact? Or does he just want to uh, make war for war's sake? If if he takes this city, he'll probably find it anyway. Uh, like head cleric is really deep in thought, and she says after a while, "I'm not I'm not an expert in these matters, but when I see like the problems with the orcs." Basically, everything that happened for the past few days happened after uh, some other party founded uh, this artifact in the first place. So I'm not really sure, but when I look at it, Dragon might not know about this artifact, but I'm pretty sure if this is a powerful dragon, he might have felt something, like, consciously or subconsciously, like, as I said, I'm not really sure. He might feel that something's wrong and there is something powerful in this city, but, as I said, it's only a theory from me, and I'm not guess. an expert, I guess, and I'm not an expert in these matters. No, you're just the DM. <laughs> No meta gaming, please. <laughs> and yeah, and speaking about the artifact, well, I'm almost sure that nobody who lives and who lived knows a good place to hide this thing. Like, I'm pretty sure no matter where we ha hide this thing, this artifact. Asmarius will find him. And just a quick information for um, for Elm. Can I assume that you simply told him about this Asmarius guy when you were like sharing information? The random evil mage level forty or whatever he was. Twenty, but yeah, that's what he does. And he's not necessarily Wait, again? evil. Like, there were some. Um, random evil for, uh, uh, evil sorcerer who came around here, made some ominous noise about the artifact, then disappeared. I'm just wondering if Otiros or Genkiro told... Wait, is Simon here? Not yet. Okay, so you didn't tell him yet about Asmaris. Okay, so she says that I'm not uh, sure 
if then if there even is a place where we can find where we can hide uh, this artifact from Asmarius. And I'm almost certainly sure that nothing, nobody, and nothing holds the knowledge of how to destroy this thing. But, uh, well, there might be someone who is not, that you cannot meet on our plane, but you can meet him under different c circumstances. I'm not sure if he even exists, like father told me once about him as a legend, but well, mm. it only depends if you wanna give it a try and if you trust me. Mm. Who? Well, I don't think he has a name. Father told me once that they, f some people, he heard some kind of stories that some people call him the keeper, some people call him the watcher. Um, Why did I take knowledge planes? Basically, over she says that there is some there is. There might be someone who, uh, uh, sorry, uh, different way, uh, that basically you do not, there is no place where you can hide this artifact and in your world there is nobody who knows how to destroy it, but there might be one person uh, who has the exact knowledge how to destroy it, but uh, there is no possible. He doesn't live in your world. Like, there's another way of you to meet him. Which is? Uh, well, it might sound strange or even fun silly. funny to you or silly, but basically. Uh, you will need to fall into deep slumber. Really deep. You mean like go to sleep? That's never <laughs> happened. <laughs> well, it sounds reasonable. Yes. Well, I'd say take a little more than go to sleep to meet some ancient evil mage. <laughs> well, you won't be. We are not talking about meeting Asmarius. Okay, I, was, I, th I thought we were no, who no, no, we were no, talking no. about. Meeting the Keeper guy who uh, knows how to destroy the artifact. Uh, okay, I thought you were talking about Asmarius. Oh well, I kind of missed something then. Oh well, keep on. Yeah, sorry if I'm... Uh, sorry, but today I have some kind of problems with my speech and I make a, some kind of mistakes in English, so sorry for that. Uh, Okay, so, but yes, basically, in the shortest terms, it is sleep, but I will need to make small preparations and hope that the information my father left me is still actual. Basically, if you, like, do you, like, uh, do you go with it? Like, do you want to give it a try? I'd be willing to try it. No, I would. Um, and what are our chances of success? Honestly, like, with absolutely sincerity, the head cleric looks at you and says that. She has no idea, but but for now, she guesses that we need to try everything we have, like every possibility we can like think of. Hmm. Sure. I can look to the rest and group and nod. All right. Hmm. 
Okay. We're kind of running out of options anyway. Uh, yep. Okay, so... Uh, you follow her to another uh, room where are, in a few moments, her and several servants prepare free... You know, not exactly beds like with pillows and sheets, but, you know, places where you can uh, lie down. And there is pillows also... and maybe a teddy bear. <laughs> yeah. so, some, something enough that you will be com comfortable enough. And, yeah, there is also somebody is preparing uh, some kind of magical circle. Like, head cleric is preparing some kind of magical room circle on the ground around the... Uh, beds. Also, where is are we going to introduce Adam or anything, or even? Uh, yeah, that's. So well, I'm I'm just listening. It, I'll, I'll get in in time. It will be. It okay. will happen very soon. Uh, don't, yeah, don't worry. I'm, uh, it's actually helpful for me to kind of hear what's going on and how you know what I mean. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So technically, he is the keeper. He was the keeper all along. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll be Not exactly. It. Mm. But uh, as you can see, Adam, like uh, other people from the party, are really considerate and fun bunch that they don't do not want to for you to be like bored or something like that. Anyways, yeah, sure. anyways, uh, so you uh, lie down. There's some kind of uh, light. I yep. sit down with my legs crossed. Ah, okay, you can do it as like that. You, mm. you, you even think that would, it would be better for you, because you are I, like... Already I presume my can more going well. into a deep meditation than a deep sleep, uh. which is why I'm doing it like this. Okay, mm. but yeah, for the purposes of this uh, so I, meeting. So I... Oh well, I'm continuously interrupting you. So I presume I can't take my horse in with this circle? <laughs> uh, not really. Oh, come on. Maybe it'll be, be able to speak to <laughs> you in the southern plane. <laughs> So you really want to bring that horse, dude, don't Yes, you? of course. Yeah, it's you, much if, if, if this if this horse is so close to your heart and soul, <laughs> if you if you focus on it, you, your consciousness might might even get his astral projection when you will like meet with this guy on the <laughs> like astral plane or some some shit like that. Okay, then I don't have to walk anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Uh, normally, like while you meditate or like trying to get to sleep, the uh, magic circle starts to slightly glow. And even though it's like day and you already had some kind of sleep, not too much time passed since your last like uh, rest, you feel like your eyes are closing and you slowly descend into not void nor darkness, but you simply uh, fell asleep. And of course, while in sleeping you or meditating, you don't know how much time has passed, but there is a moment where instead of darkness around you, you realize that you are in a new place. Basically, and you are in a new place, and before we continue, Adam, Lysander, one question from you. Where were you? Well, um, I wrote that my character grew up in... Um, uh, uh, what was that sound that we said? Oh, wait a second. Uh, Grey Coot, but um, he's, you know, he's level 7 now, so he can wander around. I mean, there's a road from Grey Coot to... This other city, isn't it? Yep, there is. And um, my background suggests that he does know stuff about cities, and he is a member of this guild. So I would suggest that he's just visiting this city and is in the guild. Yep, I'm. I'm g even guessing that you might have heard uh, about the some kind something with undead, and because you are. You are the member of the guild. You might even heard that some of the members of the guild have fallen. Okay, yeah, sure, fine, cool. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's good at listening to rumors and he's good at, um, uh, well, 
about being a guild member, I hope. So. Yep. Okay, so for you, a rather strange thing happens because you weren't in the tavern. You were you were not with the others. No, sure. And it's another day. You had good rest, and you are going around the city, or you are sitting in the inn gathering information. And yeah, strange thing happened because suddenly you feel like something like comes onto you, like you feel maybe not tired, but you slowly close your eyes and you decide that this um, table or chair is really comfortable and you know you get real comfy and well, just like that, you uh, fell asleep. Blimey, and considering elves are immune to magic sleep, it must have been powerful. <laughs> no, it's all right. I'm, I'm happy to go with it for the story. Uh, yeah, just sometimes we don't yeah, go Yeah, no, with, no, it's fine. It's, 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 it's mythic. It's a mythic sleep or whatever. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and suddenly in the moment you were in the darkness of the sleep and now you are in the... No, uh, well, in the corridor and you see... You realize after a moment that you that you are not alone in here and that you have there's there's other people from like you're not oh, alone. Right. Yeah. Mm. As the map says. Hello. <laughs> oh hey, greetings. Uh, are you, you the from? keeper? <laughs> um I've just woken up here. Um, oh well. So gosh, don't really know. Um we met the sun there. On the guild. Oh. oh yeah. Hi. And yeah, if you wanna decide, sorry that I interrupt you. Just a quick thing, that because this guild is not a is not big, it's rather small, so you can decide if you wanna know each other. Okay, fine. Well, let's say we do to make it easier. Yep. Hey, I recognize you, you guys. You are eternal wanderers too. Why on earth have we all been put here together? God knows. Oh, well, we know why we're here. We don't know how you came here. Uh, we came here, I, but I, that might uh, explain something. something. Why are you here? Well, we came looking for some mythical. Oh, sorry. First heat. things first. Um, yeah, you. One of you knew me. I'm Lysander. I'm uh, from Get Greycoot. I'm an Eternal Wanderer. Pleased to meet you all. Uh, greetings. I shake your hand, or at least try to. <coughs> Hello. Anyway, and so the you were saying. Kangaroo gives you a high five. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Boom, in there. <laughs> and uh, we've got a brave knight as well who isn't here yet. Oh, no, sorry, John. Oh, I'm the knight, supposedly. Sadly, my horse isn't here, so I don't look very much like a knight, but I'll have to do. Yeah, you, you're wearing. You, you've got a big spear and heavy armor, though, don't you? Yes. But so, you look like a knight to me. Mm. The people have attendance that mistake me for a guardsman without my horse, but you know. Yeah, when Otiros is speaking about his horse, like for a <laughs> moment you see a flicker of some kind of projection and you can see not physical horse, but you know, like <laughs> something of a like ghost of a horse like standing, standing next to him. Oh, you poor thing. And yeah. Otiros knows that, yes, this is the projection of his horse. <laughs> And his God, I need to figure out a name for it. And his... <laughs> Make a tearful moment. I Co meet you again. <laughs> Call your horse Maximus. It will be <laughs> awesome. I don't Luke. know. I don't know if you watch Tangled cart, uh, movie or not. No, uh, anyways. So, so I look this. around. You look like you need a horse, mate. <laughs> Who are you Am talking I to? I'm <laughs> talking to Otteros. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, I do. <laughs> oh, well. Um, well, so, anyway, probably not that pressing at the moment. Anyway, so why are we here? Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah, while tracking, oh, hello. Like, you realize that in front of you, there is... Uh, How long have you been here? Another...